I never get a spot, uh, a spell where nothing happens. <laughs> when most people sleep, something is happening. I'm Henry Watson. I'm the wood carving artist of Louisiana. Once upon a time, we all heard that story. Once upon a time, it was this, it's that. But in my art world, I like to go out and gather what once was here, but is now gone. I like to capture the history of where we come from and to where we're going. That's all part of my world. Now, you know, it's amazing to think about it. I grew up in that area down there, and I went to the high school right over there, and now I'm living right, <laughs> right down the street. I never put it all together. You'd think that's what your life circle would come back to be. I grew up not far from here, five miles down the road, and we didn't have no general store and everything. It had one major store around Livonia, and I used to ride a bike to get here to buy chisel, paint, and supplies. The man who ran the store knew who I was. He knew I was trying to learn art, and he would tell me, listen, we got this kind of paint, we got that. I didn't have money to buy it. So what he would do is keep a little list and put down, well, Henry needs this, this, and this, and this, and he's gonna come back and pay me on time. You see, think about that kind of love when you're young coming up. But the most important part with this gentleman, his name was Mr. Blue. Everybody called him Mr. Blue. But in his store, he had what I needed. And so when I made a project, a piece of art, I'd go back to him and say, now I got to sell this piece of artwork. And in time, we would swap out or he would buy one. And even today, his daughter has one of the earliest pieces that I did, because you're talking about at the beginning of Mr. Watson's story. Believe it or not, I tell people when I first start off, I never thought I would be a wood carver. There wasn't a wood carver around. I start off drawing little stick animals like everybody else, kid stuff, right? But what was so neat about it, I was doing stuff that I was familiar with. I was familiar with the oak trees around me, cypress trees around me, little cabin, stuff you say that you see in the country. As I evolved from drawing the little stick animals and the little trees I thought was a tree, I went to Livonia High School. There I was trained how to go out and spot and see things and draw it, get your perspective right. The most important part in capturing these things is having the three-dimensional phases, foreground, the middle ground, and the background. From there, I learned how to start painting things and start mixing colors and painting. But the most important part, I learned what a chisel and a mallet was. And I started learning how to carve things like your last name, the Jones, the Williams. We carve it into a piece of wood, and it'll stand out 3D, and we paint it. Simple as that's that. But I saw it beyond that, you know? And that was my humble beginning of being a wood carver. My son planted this, he was about two years old. And the significant part of it is, he planted a cypress tree. The same wood I used in my carvings for the last 40 some years. Of course, they make a lot of cypress knees everywhere. <laughs> but I'm glad to have it. I mean, I started off carving early on. Uh, I used to carve on like some pine wood, something that was soft enough to carve into. You know, you got some wood that's so hard, it, it, it'll disencourage you of not even fooling with it because you can't get nowhere with it if you're trying to carve an oak or whatever. So the cypress wood was around us, but yet it was still soft and the grain of wood was straight. So when you start carving in something, you know, and you're learning the stages of carving, it would run to your cut lines and we work, not you trying to beat it out and make. So cyber became the perfect word of choice. It's wood that's over 100, 200 years old. You go back in time and you find these old buildings that people built, the barns, they built everything out of cypress around here. So it was easy to run, find somebody, had some boards just laying around, trash to them, they're gonna throw it away. And they say, well, I said, what are you gonna do with that? I say, wait till you see. <laughs> in here is a historic board that came off an old barn that's in the neighboring town. And the family wanted me to have this wood that came from their place to do a carving on there for of their family history. So these old boards, if they could talk, what a stir they would tell. Look at this. See all the nails that was in it? So I'm gonna cut this board in two pieces and this is gonna be two carvings for this family. One, they had a prize bull that LSU adopted and did all the history and, and the story on it. Very prized bull. 
and I'm gonna do a carving of that bull in here, and they call that bull Abraham. And it's gonna be carved on this side of the board, and then the other half, I'm gonna do another scene of it for the family. I mean, this board is priceless. The size of this board, being this wide, normal boards don't come this wide. When you get them this wide, you know you're talking over 100, 200 years old right here. Look at this indention. What you think happened there? Some animal was nibbing at it, nibbing at it, and it made that indention in there, see? Think about that history. That can only happen once. <laughs> you know, I never knew I would be where I am at today. I just wanted to do something with my hands, and I didn't see all the potential in what I was doing, but I kept doing it every day. Someone come and said, wow, look what you're doing. You're doing 3D art. 3D, where you see that at? You know, my little circuit was small. I just went <laughs> within a 20 mile radius. I wasn't nowhere. But people start coming from other cities, other towns, looking to see what Henry Watson was doing. It was a lady, and her name was Miss Lucy Paulange. They lived in New Rose. They owned a plantation home there. And at the time, I didn't know none of that. But she heard about what I was doing coming out to high school and doing so she come to see. And she brought some writers with her because they was all writing about her 100, 200 year old plantation home. I said, let's go see Henry Watson. So they come to see me. They fell in love with what I was doing. And she said, I want to buy. I said, you want to buy one of these? That opened the spark. <laughs> you want to buy something I'd done? She said, yes, you're doing great. She said, let me tell you something. If you continue to do what you're doing, one day the world is going to be the pathway to your door. I never forgot that saying. And now I've got people coming from all over the world. And if she was still here today, you know, I'd be hugging and kissing her right now because everything she told me has come true. I probably wouldn't have been where I'm at today if it hadn't been for the love she showed. And she come and just surrounded me. And she said, I want you to come to the house. That's when I knew they owned the plantation home and they had art all around. I was able to see, look at books, and I was able to meet people that was coming to interview her and her house and writers. And she would say, before I let you talk about me and my house, I want to talk to you about Henry Watson. Very powerful, open the doors. Now, you got to know, these people come from all over from France was wanted to get her story. And she said, yeah, but now his story is part of my story. Looking back and just thinking about my starting points and where I come from, again, the history and the culture, it all started in the rural areas and little small towns just like Livonia, even little towns smaller than that. Little areas that wasn't even a town, was just a little community, and that was one where I come from. And if I tell you I grew up in Val Verde, you probably never heard of that before. Along that smokestack right there, from the front of it, all the way back was houses, little cabin houses, just like that. And then where these trees at right here was houses going that way, going back. And then it's, where that sign here, it was a road that took you straight to the back. And it just had houses all along there. And we played ball out here in this field. Now, it's, it's, of course, they, they're raising uh, soybeans and sugar cane and everything else here now. But back then, we used to walk up in here. We all played ball back in here and everything else. And then right here was some more houses under these trees. See all the big trees that are still standing? They had houses up under them. I want to recreate where I grew up and where I came from. And where all of the houses where we lived and where grandmother lived and aunts and all lived, it's all gone. It's just a field now with farm growing sugarcane, soybeans. And I can still see where those buildings are and doing. And my challenge is going to be to remember who was, was here, there, do. And I'm going to pick that time frame when I was little, coming up, and I want to recreate that for me. You know, so I have my legacy of who I, where I evolved, where I come from, and where the world will know this is Val Verde. This is the home and the spot of Henry Watson. I don't want it to be forgotten. And hopefully it might go in some museum somewhere. You know, when my grandmother was 92 years old, about to depart from this world, she would tell me all the time, she said, Henry, you are going 
and painting and meeting people who owns these plantations and homes. All we ever done was lived on the plantation and worked for the plantation. We'd never been in the home. And I, it didn't register because it got, it's just a norm that I'm meeting somebody who, you know, at Oak Alley, or at Nottaway, I'm, I'm meeting the owners, I'm sitting and having dinner with them. But my grandmother lifetime never happened. One day, I brought my grandmother with me to a historical plantation home, and I told him, I said, my grandmother's out here with me in the car. She's blind, and she can't see. That's a whole other story of my life. I had to be her eyes, you know. I carved, and she felt it. And when I would go off on these trips to deliver paintings, I would take her, and we would ride. And we would talk about what I'm seeing, what along the way, and everything. Imagine if you close your eyes for a second. And imagine you done jumped in a car, going to somewhere you've never been before, and now you arrive and the people come out greeting you and saying, come on in. My grandma said, oh, I'm gonna stay right here. I said, well, grandma, do you just want to sit here or do? And I said, uh, she whispered and told me, she said, I never been inside of a mansion, a house. We only just work and did all the work for. So I told the owner that and she said, oh my God. She said, come on, let's bring your grandmother in. She's welcome here. She recognized what my grandmother was saying before I recognized what she was trying to tell me and show me, you know. And so the lady said, well, let's bring your grandmother in. It's my pleasure. That resonated with me, you know. And so at that point, we end, we're chatting, we're talking. And I, I knew then I got to document everything that was once part of her life, what's going on to do, and where I'm headed and where I'm going because the change is coming. They say, well, you don't never rest and sleep. I say, I'm passionate about what I'm doing. So I'm always working it. I'm always working it. And there's only one me.